Good evening, everyone. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our online service at Bethany Assembly tonight. We thank you for joining with us, and we trust that the Lord will just minister to your heart this evening. Before I begin, I want to pray. Father, again tonight, I thank and praise you for the privilege of preaching your gospel. And I'm asking for the next few minutes of time that you would grant unto me, your servant, the ability to preach the message that you have put upon my heart. May the Holy Spirit go before me tonight, prepare each and every heart to receive with understanding what the Spirit is saying to each one in this hour. I ask it in Jesus' name, and we will be sure and careful to give you all the praise and glory for everything that is accomplished here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to speak to you this evening on the subject, my hour is not yet come. My hour is not yet come. I want to say to you, so many that are listening tonight, many have prayed many prayers. Prayers that some of them have not yet been answered. Prayers that maybe even haven't been answered for years. You've prayed it and they haven't been answered for years. It's hard, it's hard to wait for the answer to our prayers. But I ask you to join with me as we look at John's Gospel, chapter 2. And I, I want to read it, verses 1 through 4. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, when the wine had run out and they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said it unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. My hour is not yet come. But I want you to notice verse 5 for a moment. Jesus' mother said, His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Even though Jesus said, My hour has not yet come, his mother was trusting him to do a miracle. That was the desire of her heart, and she believed in him, and she was trusting him to do a miracle. So much so that she said to the, the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. She knew that it would be fulfilled. My hour is not yet come. This must be the answer to many prayers and petitions that we have prayed and cried out to God. Okay. My hour has not yet come. It is the nature of human beings. It is our nature to demand this. How, when, and where? Those are the questions that we want answers to when we many times when we are seeking God for something. How is it going to happen? How are you going to do this? When is it going to happen? I've been praying, I've been seeking you, I've been asking, but when is it going to happen? And then again, where? Where will it be? Where will it happen? Many times we pray. When we pray, we try to put God in a box. We have it all figured out before we ever go to him in prayer. We tell ourselves, well, if God would do this and God would do that, God would do the other thing, this would all work out just the way I want it. We bring that to God and we try to tell God how to answer our prayer. Okay. We've got it all figured out. But hear me, we must remember this, that our ways are not God's ways. Our thoughts are not God's thoughts. We have to remember that he is the Lord God Almighty, Creator God Almighty. He answers prayer. He does it in His way, in His time. And He just, all He asks for us is, trust me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. He just asks us to trust Him. So I ask you to think of this. Those of you that have maybe been waiting for 
a long time for a prayer that you have asked the Lord for. I want you to remember, not yet does not mean never. Not yet does not mean never. Sometimes it, it's hard for us to understand that there, are other, uh, there is another party even more involved than we ourselves are. If we're praying for loved ones, if we're praying for children, if we're praying for a spouse, a husband or a wife, we need to realize and remember they're involved in it. It's them that we are praying for. God knows what he has to do to bring them to the place where they'll make a decision. We can't just take it to God and say, this is what you, we want you to do. God already knows what he's going to do. He knows what it's going to take, and he knows how long it's going to take it. Let's take a look at the scriptures this evening, and let me explain this to you through the scriptures. Turn with me in your Bibles to John's Gospel, chapter 11. John's Gospel, chapter 11. I first want to read the first three verses. We're going to spend a little time here in chapter 11. Verse 1. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Let's stop for a minute and look what is happening. Lazarus is very sick, very sick. Mary and his sister Martha are so concerned. They know if Jesus were here, he could heal him. If Jesus were here, this could all be taken care of. So they sent to where Jesus was, told him that Lazarus is sick, expecting him to come and heal him. You see, they already had it figured out. Jesus will come. Jesus will lay hands on him. Jesus will speak the word over him. He'll be healed. They had it all figured out. Okay. They did not. They did not understand. Listen to what Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says. God speaking says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans of good and not of evil. To bring you to an expected end. God already has plans for every one of our lives. He knows what he's planned and purposed for us. And if we obey him, that plan will be fulfilled. He doesn't need us to try to tell him how to do it. He already has it figured out as to what he's going to do. So, not yet, not yet does not mean no. Nor does a lengthy delay mean no. God has a better plan and a better purpose. Let's take a look at Martha again. Martha thought Jesus was too late. Jesus stayed in that town for two extra days, knowing that Lazarus was very, Lazarus was very sick. Finally, he told his disciples, we need to go back because Lazarus sleepeth. And immediately they said, well, Lord, if he's asleep, it'll, it'll be good for him. Sleep will do him good. So Jesus got very plain with them. And he said, verse 14, And Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Listen to verse 15. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. What they didn't understand is Jesus already knew the miracle that he was going to perform, and that miracle was for their benefit. It was for all of those that were going to be around and see its benefit. You see, if Jesus could raise Lazarus from the dead, after he's been dead four days and buried in the tomb, then they would believe that Jesus could resurrect anyone. They would, could believe that when Jesus said, I'll be dead for three days in the tomb, but I'll be back. They could believe it when they saw that he, he brought Lazarus back. Okay. Martha thought Jesus was too late. He came. They told her, 
the master's here, but she thought that he was too late. Let's take a look at verse 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother would not have died. Again, Martha thinking, if Jesus would have been here, he could have just spoken the word or laid hand, and Lazarus would have been healed. He would not have died. Okay. Have you ever thought, while Martha and Mary were waiting, hoping that Jesus would hurry up and get here, the waiting must have seemed like an etern eternity to them. They're so worried over Lazarus, they're watching, and the time is speeding by. Where are you, Lord? Where are you, Lord? The thoughts that must have gone on in their mind. Okay. How can God wait when we are in such a hurry? We need him right now. Have you thought that? Have there been situations in your life when, when you felt that you needed him right now? The answer has to come now. Remember what I said. God is never too early. He's never too late. He's always right on time. In his time. In his time. God knows the perfect time to answer all of our prayers. He knows what he's planned, and in the perfect time, he will do it. Sometimes in our anxiety, we ask, does God really care? I have prayed and prayed and prayed over this, and I don't seem to get an answer. Does God really care? How much does God really care for us? Let's take a look at verses 32 through 35. When Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Saying the same things to Jesus that Martha had said. Lord, if you would have been here, if you would have been here. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. When we're hurting, does Jesus care? Does he care? Look again. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. He was broken for them, broken for their sorrow, broken over what they were going through. He's broken over each and every one of us. When we're going through situations that are hurting us, situations that break us, He's concerned, but he's right there with us. So when you are troubled or broken, remember Jesus is broken with us. Yes, the answer is yes, Jesus cares. Yes, Jesus is concerned for, for us. Hebrews chapter 4 tells us we have a great high priest who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He's touched with the things that we go through. Touch him because he loves us so much. We have a song that we haven't sang it for a long time. It goes like this. Jesus knows all about our troubles. He will guide us till the day is done. There is not a friend like this lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all of our troubles. It is not easy to live with the not yet. The not yet. Waiting is the most difficult task in life. I ask you to think about this. Think about Joshua and Caleb. When they went in to spy out the land, the promised land that Jesus said he gave it to them. They went in to spy it out. They saw and they were excited in everything they saw, Joshua and Caleb. They were excited about it. They saw the, the richness of the land. They saw how the fruit grew in the land. They saw the walled cities there to protect them. They saw houses already built. 
that they were not going to have to build, but they would occupy. They saw all of the good of it. But there were ten others that went with them. And when they got in and they, they saw all the abundance, okay, but then they also saw the giants, giants in the land. And when they saw them, their hearts were broken with fear. They were trembling. When they saw the giants, they said, we look like grasshoppers in their sight. We cannot go in there and take them. They came back with that evil report. We can't do it. Both Joshua and Caleb were so excited. They say, we, we'd be well able. Let's go in. Let's go get it. Let's do it. God has given it to us. They were excited. They were ready. But because the others had convinced the people they couldn't do it, they refused to go into the promised land. So Joshua and Caleb had to wander 40 years throughout that desert, round and round, for 40 years, waiting for the fulfillment of the promise. Because God said to them, because they were faithful, because they were ready, God said that he was given them. They would be able to go in. Forty years they waited for the fulfillment of that promise. Remember, not yet does not mean no. It means that God has a perfect plan that has to come into fulfillment before that answer can come. Forty years they wandered until all of that generation died in the wilderness. Then God opened the door for them. Think about Joseph, just a young man, when his, just a teenager, 17 years old, when his brothers sold him to, to become a slave in Egypt. Think about he was disgraced for something he never did. He was cast into prison, a political prisoner, for years, for years. How long the time must have been. I'm convinced in my heart, Joseph probably prayed and sought God, asked him, get me out of here. I know I would have. Get me out of here. But God had a plan, and God was fulfilling that plan. He was also working on Joseph to get him ready to be the major part of that plan. It's always hard to wait, to wait. And sometimes, sometimes it's really drawn out. Sometimes it's even years. Think of these that I've talked about. Years before those plans were fulfilled. But when the answer came, they were, re they were exposed to God's greatness and God's glory. Look what the Lord has done. Joseph become the second ruler of all of Egypt. All of Egypt. Joshua and Caleb got to go into the promised land and receive the property that God told them they would have. Okay. We could go on through the scriptures and find others that had to wait for a long time. Like David, for instance. David waited years. He was just uh, uh, 15 years old when Saul, Samuel anointed him with oil to be king. It was years after that before he ever became king. Years of running, of hiding, and fear of his life. But when it came, was fulfilled, look what God did for him. The greatest king that Israel has ever known. The greatest king. Because he loved God. So folks, again, I want to remind you, my time is not yet. My hour is not yet. The prayers you pray, maybe God is saying, the time is not yet. Not yet does not mean no. Sometimes not yet means wait, wait. I'm still working on this. Okay, like I said, it is not easy to live with the not yet. Waiting is the most difficult task in our life. Francis Ridley Harvergal wrote, Ask not how, but trust him still. Ask not when, but wait his will. Simply on his word rely. God shall all your need supply. Wait for him. Remember what Jesus said to Martha 
when she felt it was all over? You remember what he said to her? You'll find it in verse, beginning at verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Okay, remember what he said. He said, I am. He, pardon me, he did not say, I am not. I was or I will be. He said, I am. I am. And that's what Jesus is to each and every one of our night. He is our I am. Whatever I have need of, Jesus is the answer. He is the answer. Jesus performed a great miracle that day. The reason that he waited to come, the four days that he waited to come, he was going to perform that great miracle. He raised Lazarus from the dead. He simply stood there, prayed a simple prayer to the Father, and then he shouted, Lazarus, come forth. And immediately, bound in grave clothes, Lazarus is standing there, standing there. Jesus said, loose him and set him free. So I want to ask you a question tonight. What are you praying for? What are you praying for? How long have you been praying? I believe Jesus gave me this message for you tonight to let you know that it may have been a long time, He's still working on your request. He knows what he has planned and purposed for you. He knows what he's going to do, how he's going to answer it. But the time is not yet. In his fullness, in the fullness of his time, God will supply that answer for you. The only thing that he asks of us is trust him. Trust him. Don't give up. Don't stop praying. Don't stop thanking him. Trust him. Remember, there is a purpose for the delay. God doesn't only have to work for your answer. He has to work in other situations to bring it to pass. Okay. Remember, there is a purpose for that delay. Not yet. God is still working. Trust him. Trust him. And you will see the glory of God. God is working. Would you pray with me tonight? Father, again, I come before you in the name of Jesus. I have brought the message that you have put upon my heart. Lord, you know who you intended to hear this message. I'm asking, may the Holy Spirit quicken the truth of this message to every heart that has heard it. Father, may it stir their heart and encourage them to keep believing to keep looking unto you, knowing that you have not forgotten them, you have not forgotten the prayer, and that you are answering for them. The answer will come as we continue to trust and obey. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us tonight. I encourage you that we will be having an outdoor service on Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. We encourage you to come to the Sunday morning service. God bless you.